Have you ever looked at a house and thought it looked haunted? I have. For decades, rumors have been circulating that the house is haunted. Normally, they're the ones hidden behind a fortress of trees with broken down fences and windows, and perhaps the odd black cat sifting about. But are they haunted? Probably not. Winchester Mystery House is one of the most haunted places in America. From the Romanian monastery to paranormal activity on an island, here are 15 haunted houses that are actually real. Number 15. The Abbey of Carta, Romania. A horror film that showcased the many unique elements of the genre, The Nun divided its audience. The Conjuring is a series of horror films that delve into different locations and depict real-life events, with references to the likes of the Amityville hauntings and the Enfield poltergeist. There are also multiple films about the infamous Possessed Annabelle doll, made to look far creepier and more ominous than the original Raggedy Ann doll. These events are usually investigated by the Warrens, a husband and wife duo who go about solving many paranormal cases around the globe. The Nun, however, takes a completely different approach. The film takes place years back in 1952, where it showcases the Romanian Carta Monastery as a fully functional abbey. The film tells the story of a young nun who is sent to the monastery to investigate the events surrounding another nun's suicide. Instead, she uncovers the secrets of a demonic spirit named Valak, who takes on the appearance of a nun and haunts the monastery. The the film has close ties to a 15th century monastery that's a popular tourist attraction in Romania. It's said to be haunted by spirits of Cistercian monks who used to call the monastery home. Many visitors to the site have claimed to have experienced walls vibrating and chairs moving on their own. Maybe not as hair-raising as the 2018 horror flick, but still unnerving nonetheless. Before we go on, we have a cool challenge for y'all. It'll take about five seconds to complete. Uh, let's make a deal. Just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 10 years of amazing luck and fortune. Try it, it actually works. Number 14, The Island of the Doll. The Island of the Dolls, or La Isla de las Munecas, is a small island just south of Mexico City. A site with a very rich paranormal history, the island is now a tourist attraction, but it was never intended to be that way. In fact, it's only become an attraction due to very unfortunate and saddening circumstances. Which is one of the most haunted spots, they say, in Mexico. It is dedicated to a young girl who met her fate there. The island is covered in thousands upon thousands of rather unsettling dolls who are said to be possessed by the young girl's spirit. Legend has it that the girl drowned in a canal and her body was discovered by the island's caretaker, Don Julian Santana Barrera. Later, he found a doll floating in the canal, which was believed to have belonged to her. He retrieved the doll and hung it on a tree to pay tribute to her. However, it didn't end there. Julian was soon haunted by the spirit of the girl, and in an attempt to make it go away, he hung more dolls around the island, hoping it would please her spirit. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. After 50 years of collecting dolls and hanging them around the island, Julian was found drowned under suspicious circumstances in the same spot the girl had been found decades prior. The island is now a tourist attraction where visitors bring their own dolls and hang them on the trees. Slightly bizarre, but true. Number 13, Whaley House. San Diego is home to some of the world's greatest beaches, with its wonderful weather and unique culture attracting tourists from all over the world. It is also home to arguably the most haunted house in the United States. Hi, welcome to the Whaley House, believed to be one of the most haunted homes in America. Whaley House has a rich history of tragedy and eventual paranormal activity that dates back as far as the late 1850s. What started out as simply a man 
building a home for his family took many sinister twists and turns over two centuries. The house was built on top of a public execution site where thief Yankee Jim Robinson was hanged. Thomas Whaley knew of its past and still purchased the land in 1855 where he began construction. In 1857, Thomas, his wife, and three children moved in, and they opened a general store soon after. Tragedy soon struck, not once, but twice. Their youngest son passed away due to scarlet fever not long after moving in at just 18 months. If that wasn't tragic enough, a few months later, a fire raged inside the home and destroyed the general store. This was enough motivation for Thomas to move his family away to San Francisco. It was only years later the family returned to the home, with Thomas refusing to give up on his passion project. However, the tragedy only continued, with his wife Anna being held at gunpoint by a group of armed men and the eventual suicide of his oldest daughter, Violet following a rough marriage. Many visitors over the years have reported multiple paranormal-related sightings, and with many of the Whaley family having died inside the house along with the infamous Yankee Jim before its construction, it's hardly surprising. Reports of footsteps, sounds of crying, and even aromas have all been linked to the Whaley family. Number 12. Faces of Belmez. This rather bizarre but equally unique cottage isn't necessarily haunted, but does contain some rather unnerving sights. Located within the town of Belmez, this strange cottage is built on ancient burial grounds that date back to 1830. The kitchen is home to a very intriguing mystery that has led to plenty of head scratching over the years. In 1971, Maria Gomez Pereira, a woman living in the house at the time, entered the kitchen, where she soon found a face looking up at her from the kitchen floor. It wasn't an apparition, however, but some form of plaster casting that rose from beneath the house, almost like a head had been buried right below the house. Understandably, Pereira wanted rid of this rather uncomfortable feature in her home, and she enlisted the help of her neighbors as they chipped away at the cement with an axe. This only added to the ordeal as they soon uncovered more face casts belonging to children and other men. This is the origin of what is now known as the Faces of Belmez. Experts are still unable to verify how these casts got there, with many visitors left to speculate whether or not this was orchestrated by Pereira or whether paranormal entities were at work. Number 11. Blicking Hall. Blicking Hall is an astonishing site that was originally owned by Sir John Fastolf of Caister. His ownership ended around 1459, and the property was later inhabited by Sir Thomas and Elizabeth Bolin between 1499 and 1505. Look at that. That is a, certainly a very impressive view. Their children, Mary, George, and Anne, who later became queen, were believed to have been born in the hall. The Blicking Hall that we know now was built on the ruins of the Bolins' property and has passed through plenty of hands before the National Trust secured ownership. Access was provided to the public in 1962. Because of the site's age and former inhabitants, it's easy to understand why there's a rich paranormal history within it. The Bolins' daughter, Anne, is said to roam the building at night, dressed in white and carrying her severed head, arriving only by a coach which is full of headless horses and horsemen. Her father also roams the building, carrying his severed head as punishment for his past wrongdoings. Needless to say, you wouldn't want to be visiting this hall in the dark of night. Number 10. 50 Berkeley Square. Heavily regarded as the most haunted house in London, 
50 Berkeley Square is now home of Mags Bros, a bookstore. That, my friends, is it, the most haunted house in the whole of blooming London. The house was built in the early 1700s by William Kent, with many notable historical figures occupying the property at some point. These people included MP George Canning and the ever-ominous Mr. Myers. The house may not be much to look at, but it does have an intriguing history full of paranormal activities. The attic seems to be the mainstay for our ghostly friends, as it is said to be haunted by the spirit of a young girl who committed suicide by throwing herself out the top floor window after enduring years of abuse by her uncle. The term scared to death could be used literally here, as there have been two reported deaths during people's stays in the building. Number 9. Scotland's Spookiest Castle Leith Hall is a charming sight if you're ever lucky enough to visit. The castle is in Kenneth Mont and was built in 1650, where it was a family home for well over 300 years. And so I'm going to uh, try to explain some of what I learned inside the uh, castle there. The building certainly looks like a gem, but its history is very dark and rather grim. Leith Hall's past history has a host of twisted tales that many argue have led to it being occupied by lost spirits. In 1746, Andrew Hay of Ran hid there from murderous soldiers after the Bloodbath Battle of Culloden. During World War I, Leith Hall became a temporary hospital. It was home for more than 500 patients, many of whom were horribly injured in the killing fields of France and Belgium. The building is now in the hands of the National Trust for Scotland after it was gifted by Henrietta Leith Hay in 1945. She lived there until her death in 1963. Its ghostly activities include a man with a white bandage draped over his head, a young man in military uniform, bedrooms smelling of camphor, sounds of footsteps, laughter, children playing, sudden temperature drops, and even actual physical touching even though nobody's around. Now that's spooky. Number 8. Hermitage Castle Hermitage Castle was built around 1300 and sits on the edge of a river in Lidsdale. It's not the most picturesque building, appearing more like a fortress than a castle. In fact, it's quite intimidating looking. Yeah. This is the other side. Many visitors feel that, for this reason, it possibly has a paranormal side. The castle is said to be occupied by two main ghosts, the first being that of Sir Alexander Ramsay, Sheriff of Teviotdale. During the 14th century, he unfortunately got on the bad side of Sir William Douglas, the Knight of Lidsdale. Even though they were technically allies, Douglas threw Ramsay into the castle's dungeon and left him to starve. The other spirit that roams the castle belongs to Bad Lord Solus, also known as Bad William. He met a horrible fate when the entire township boiled him in a cauldron. Apparently, he had been discovered practicing black magic and incorporating young children into his ritual acts before murdering them. Let's face it, if this is true, he deserved the fire and brimstone. He roams the castle, often with the sounds of the tortured children following closely behind. Number 7. Amityville Arguably the most well-documented case in the history of haunted houses around the globe, the DeFeo murders have been implemented into many novels, documentaries, and films. In the early hours of November 13, 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr., the eldest son of the DeFeo family, shot and killed both his parents and his four younger siblings in their beds as they slept. DeFeo awoke shocked the next day to find his parents dead, and even though he was charged for the crime, he still denies his role in the murders. His first response being, the devil made me do it, referencing that some evil spirit were at fault. Many still back this theory up, as DeFeo allegedly shot his family to death with a 35 caliber lever-action Marlin 336C rifle at around 3 a.m., yet nobody in the neighborhood awoke to hear the gunshots, which is bizarre. DeFeo was put away.
away for life. Although the paranormal history at 112 Ocean Avenue continued following the Lutz family moving in just under a year following the murders. The family fled the house only a year later and refused to give an account as to what occurred during their final night, as they said it was far too frightening. Definitely. This building is almost supercharged with rumors suggest strange noises, objects being thrown around the room, and demonic voices telling priests to get out upon attempting to bless the property. Whether there's any truth to these stories is still yet to be uncovered. However, the home's violent crime back in 1974 would suggest some spirits could still be wandering around, while the demonic presence is a bit hard to believe. The house looks ominous even by today's standards, and it's understandable why Hollywood wanted to capitalize on this look in the past. The events are always exaggerated within these films, but the origins remain the same. Number 6. Rose Hall Located high on the hillside in lush St. James, Jamaica, Rose Hall is a three-story, whitewashed great house that feels unnerving at first glance, but is overall a wonderful spectacle. And you notice the room is all red because she had a passionate nature for blood. It was once home to the infamous Jamaican witch Annie Palmer, also known by many as the White Witch of Jamaica. The building dates back as far as the late 1700s and sits atop the hillside which overlooks the Caribbean Sea. Rose Hall was cleverly named the Calendar House due to it originally containing 365 windows, 52 doors, and 12 bedrooms. Its unfortunate tale begins in in 1746, when Henry Fanning, an Englishman, prepared for his imminent marriage to Rosa Kelly, a woman belonging to Irish immigrants living in Jamaica. Fanning purchased the 290-acre plot of land to build a home for his future family. The pair married in 1747, with Fanning unfortunately passing away just a few short months later. Rosa married many times after until her own death. However, she had no children, leaving the property to John Rose Palmer, the son of Rose's most recent spouse. He married the now infamous Annie Palmer, and the rest is history. Annie was an expert at voodoo, took slaves in as lovers, and eventually even murdered her husband, John. She led a very dark life full of terrible atrocities involving torture and murder. She eventually met a similar fate to that of her many husbands, and she still walks the halls of Rose Hall. At least according to those that have visited since, anyway. Number 5. Ghosts in the White House 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is perhaps the site of America's most famous haunted house. America's most auspicious address, and perhaps one of its most haunted. Many staff members and guests haven't been shy in describing the spiritual presence within the building, with strange noises being heard and many supposedly encountering actual apparitions. It has certainly had its fair share of spookiness. Uh, though we don't hear Trump complain about it nowadays, it's fair to say that there have been enough presidential deaths and assassinations over the years for hauntings to be a regular occurrence. You'd think the likes of Lincoln, Truman, and even Kennedy would spend some time strolling around their former office. However, it's probably a lot more terrifying for them as they have no control or say over what the country will become. This is definitely something worth considering if you want to become president, as there are years of legacy behind you. Let's hope our future presidents don't meet such cruel fates as some of their predecessors. Number 4. Dean House Dean House was built in 1906 and was mainly utilized by Richard Burton Dean, who was the superintendent for the Royal Northwest Mounted Police. Between 1906 and 1930, when Dean eventually left, the house bared witness to many gruesome and undocumented deaths. This house is supposed to be as 
equally as creepy. These tales included the likes of a man being shoved down the stairs by an anonymous force, another being shot on the porch, three confirmed suicides, one being a young child in the attic cupboard, another a heartbroken Valentine's Day lover, and the last being a young girl who jumped from the second story window into the Bow River. With this horrific story behind it, the building has quickly gained a harrowing reputation as Canada's most haunted house. Those that have entered the house have complained of many unsettling events, such as unplugged phones ringing and chairs rocking on their own. Other witnesses have also been unnerved with the sounds of laughter, loud footsteps, and a strong smell of tobacco. Number 3. Velisca Axe Murder House the house sits in a quiet residential street in Villisca, Iowa, and is the site of an infamous axe murder scene that took the lives of eight people in their beds on June 10th, 1912. This murder threw the entire township into disarray as folks struggled to sleep at night as news reporters clamored for any emerging details. If you've never heard about this, about the Villisca Axe Murder House. Well over a century on, and there's still no confirmation on what went down that fateful night in 1912. The murderer was never identified and thus was never prosecuted, and unfortunately, they never will be. The house was finally purchased again in 1994 by Darwin and Martha Lynn as they look to return the home to its original state before the murders of former owners J.B. Moore and his family. The history of the house has since appeared in many books and films, as many still theorize about what had happened and who could have committed such a crime. Many visit the house nowadays and feel that it's very unwelcoming with its overall appearance, a warning to stay away. The spirits of the eight lives taken are feared to stalk the halls to this day, holding the secrets behind the events with them but unable to share. Number 2. Monte Cristo The Monte Cristo homestead has had its fair share of supernatural incidents, all believed to be drawn from the site's many violent events in its past. Said to be one of the most haunted houses since the original owner, Christopher William Crawley, acquired the land way back in the late 1800s, many individuals have met cruel fates within the property. There was a maid who fell to her death from the balcony, a stable boy who burned to death in his bed, and Harold, the mentally disabled man who was kept chained in the caretaker's cottage for 40 years. Harold was eventually found curled up at the feet of his deceased mother. He passed shortly after being sent to a mental institution. All these stories are horrifically tragic, and as a result, their spirits still wander around the places where they met their end. Many have reported sightings of a woman in a period dress walking along the veranda, this figure belonging to the maid, while others believe the boy, who was burned to death, still haunts the coach house. The ghost of Harold also wanders the grounds as well, and many have heard the sounds of clinking chains as his spirit approaches ever closer. Number 1. La Lurie House If you're a fan of haunted sights and want to indulge in the supernatural, Though the house has a very rich and dark history in violence and in hauntings, its references in the TV series American Horror Story have further bolstered people's interest in the location. The house is located on 1140 Royal Street, and many refer to it simply as the Haunted House. This is mainly due to the figure known as Madame Delphine, who was initially a sweet and quiet daughter who became known as the Cruel Mistress. She was suspected of murdering her first two husbands, while her third marriage was nearly definitive after Louis LaLaurie made his departure. It was a turbulent time for her, and it apparently drove her mad. Many reports since have said that she inflicted an unnecessary amount of abuse on her slaves and even her own children. Madame Delphine's death was never accounted for after she left New Orleans, but if her portraits are anything to go by, she's 
definitely a spirit you don't want to run into in a dark corridor. As for the hauntings in the mansion, they can be traced back to the slaves that were abused by Delphine. Many who have stayed since have reported the sounds of quiet moaning and footsteps, while others who have stood in the vicinity have commented that the site portrays a negative energy that keeps people away. I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of horror movies, and now that I know some of the houses in them are real, I'm even less keen to watch. Imagine finding out the home you've lived in for years is actually a real-life murder house. Uh, no thanks, you can count me out. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!